Welcome to Cancer Coach Live. My name is Dr. Matthew Lunning, and I am an assistant professor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Today's discussion will cover topics around B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, from diagnosis through treatment and self-care. We will hear from Karen DeMaio from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, who will share information on resources that are available from patients and their caregivers. I am also joined by Katie Steffens, a nurse practitioner from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. She has come here to lend her expertise and to answer your questions about B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Additionally, you will hear from patients who are living with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma who will talk about their experiences with their diagnosis. On your screen, you will find a glossary located in the events resource section underneath the question box. Feel free during this presentation to reference this glossary and explore the resources made available to you from our site. Our first segment will help you understand your diagnosis and what it means to have B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Before we will begin, we will watch a short video featuring two patients, Kim Dippo and Richard Potenza. They will share some insights into their experience di being diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah, when I was diagnosed, I was very, very surprised. I was shocked. Um, lymphoma and leukemia were not part of my family tree. Um, I cried. <laughs> but I think I, I, I look back and the first thing that I thought of was, am I going to lose my hair? And that was like my biggest concern. I didn't even ask right away if I was going to be okay. I was just like, am I going to lose my hair? And it was just... It was really hard. It was harder to watch the people in my life because I know like my mom had to make all the phone calls. My mom had to like do everything and to see them so upset about it, that hurt me more than me actually going through it. Like, my first reaction was, I didn't panic. I said, we're gonna fight this. We're gonna find out if this is treatable, curable. What am I dealing with here? Karen, Katie, that introduction to this is powerful. Yeah. My goodness, all right. So understanding your diagnosis. So we're gonna lead in here with some audience response questions. And I, in, I encourage all of you who are listening to, uh, to try and give your best answer. I know it's gonna be tough. All right, so first question. What concerns you the most when you or your loved one was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? A, the cancer shortening my life or my loved one's life. B, the cancer severely interfering with my daily life. C, how painful will the treatments be and how long will they last? D, how will I pay for treatment or how will it set me back financially? You know, Katie, I see this uh, every day in clinic mm -hmm. and people are, are patients and their families are asking questions. One of the things I always, uh, it's, it's tough to struggle with is balancing financial versus getting the right treatment. How often do you hear financial uh, aspects of treatment being brought up? Well, I think that it's a big part of um, people's concerns. Uh, people worry about the cost of the treatment, missing work, um, and how they'll be able to manage all of that and trying to be able to have conversations with them so that we can choose the right treatment for them and advocate for them as best we can to be able to help with the finances involved and the time off that they need. Right. I know that being, having time off is important because, you know, if you see a 20-minute doctor visit, you know, that just doesn't encompass the amount of time that people have to actually miss work. Absolutely. How can the LLS uh, help us from, from that standpoint? So I think that what people have to understand is everybody comes from this from a different point of view. And as we saw in the videos, that not everyone has the same concern. And I think that it's important to express those concerns to your provider so that you can talk about them and actually then go from there as to how you travel through this cancer journey. Right. I, I think that's best described. It, it, is, it is truly a journey and comes down to, you know, the toughest questions that as oncologists get asked us about prognosis. And mm -hmm. prognosis is, is something that I think, uh, as referencing a letter A, uh, or answer A, uh, is, is very tough because while you cannot predict the future, you also need to use certain tools that are kind of given to you as you gather information after the diagnosis mm -hmm. of B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but prognosis always evolves over time mm -hmm. uh, in many different uh, situations in B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. 
So, uh, Katie, from, a, from the standpoint of, of daily life, do you ever walk your patient through what it's like on their first, do on their first dose? I always call it riding the roller coaster. Yeah, you never know true. how high the highs are going to be or how low the lows are going to be. It's so true. And I think what's so important um, as a, a part of the care team and feeling so lucky to be part of these patients' care teams, as you can hear from the these wonderful patients that have already given us their, their um, thoughts on this, is that patients and their families have different concerns and being able to address both of those things and valuing both of their roles in that day of coming to chemotherapy, what's that going to look like for you or your immunotherapy or this process of diagnosis? Right, so as we talk about the patient all the time, we always have to remember about the caregiver. And I think that is very important that we look at everyone involved and how it's affecting them in their daily life. Right, yeah, I know miss, missing work from uh, spouses or, or, or children, you know, trying to come to, to visits to help answer all the questions, uh, you know, um, can, be, can be a lot because, uh, you know, writing letters for work is, you know, everything that I say, yes, we'll get, we will definitely get you that, uh, get you that letter uh, so that you can attend your, your mother or your father's uh, uh, visit. Okay, so very good. So let's talk about the facts and stats in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So over, over 72,000 Americans will be diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma this year. 70.7% of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients survive at least five years. That is a drastic uh, improvement than where we were 50 years ago. And that is uh, both from the team, and I think that's very important to explain the, the team. We have improved survival not only with chemotherapy, but with supportive care that we provide to our patients these days. 2.3 new cases of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma will be diagnosed in women. Three new cases of non-Hodgkin lymphoma in men will be found in every 100,000 individuals. Those are, uh, those are uh, numbers that show you that it is more common in males than in females. So what is B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? So your body has a lymphatic system. And it's part of your immune system. This is what protects you from bacteria, funguses, and viruses each day that you're walking around the streets or driving in your car. And this lymphatic system includes your spleen, your thymus, lymph nodes, and lymph channels that allow these lymphocytes to travel all over the body to defend against those invaders. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma usually starts when an abnormal change in a white blood cell called a lymphocyte located in the lymph node or lymph tissue. Then that abnormal lymph node grows out of control okay, and produces more abnormal cells like it. These ab abnormal cells are called lymphoma. So these are the types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I, these are separated out into two different categories of most common versus other types of B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I want to speak uh, first about diffuse large B-cell lymphoma because this is the most common aggressive non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And follicular lymphoma is the most common indolent or slow-growing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And as you can see below, there are many different subtypes of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and each one of these subtypes are very important to help separate out as it may change uh, your treatment, it may change uh, your prognosis depending upon what subtype of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma you have. So the signs and symptoms of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma vary greatly. Some patients are diagnosed because they have a swollen, painless lymph node in their neck, armpit, or groin that they bring to the attention of their physician. They can present just for a regular physical and have an abnormally high white blood cell count, and they can feel completely fine. But there are some people that are very symptomatic and have soaking night sweats, um, unexplained weight loss, uh, difficulty breathing, a cough that uh, won't go away, or they can have some pain and swelling in their lower extremities, some fullness in their abdomen, um, fever, weakness, fatigue that just won't go away. It's a level of fatigue that is incomprehensible uh, to most, but it's this fatigue that whether you take a nap or wake up the next morning, it's still with you. And some patients have a rash, um, itchy skin. So 
Questions that you need to ask um, after being diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Many patients are told by their primary care physician that this looks like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or a biopsy looks to be that way. So you see an oncologist. The question is, is what type do I have? As Dr. Lunning alluded to, there are many different types and the type of lymphoma makes all the difference in the world in terms of treatment. So what is that subtype? What stage is the lymphoma, which we will talk about as well? Is there a cause for my lymphoma? Many patients are concerned that maybe there is something that they did or were exposed to um, that could cause their lymphoma. How much experience do you have in treating lymphoma? Is, are you seeing someone who sees lots of different types of cancers as well as lymphoma, or are you seeing a lymphoma specialist? Are there doctors I should contact? So this gets back to that original question. Are there, is this a rare type of lymphoma? Is this a common type of lymphoma? Is this a lymphoma that I should get a second opinion about? So the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is here to be your expert when it comes to questions about blood cancers. We encourage all patients and caregivers to contact us as soon as possible after their diagnosis so they can get assistance and support. And the place you should start is with our Information Resource Center. Here, our specialists are master-level oncology professionals who have been trained in the area of blood cancers and for today, particularly lymphoma. We encourage you to call and ask them any questions about your diagnosis that you would like to. There's also free materials that you can obtain, written materials that will give you information about lymphoma, your subtype, and other issues. There's also a sheet that you can download that will actually give you questions that you can take with you to the doctor to ask. Our Information Resource Center is at 800 number, 800-955-4572. So we're gonna take some uh, patient questions right now. So uh, what would you say to a patient that was just diagnosed with one of the more rare or challenging types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? Well, Katie? I think the um, best thing you can do is get the informa any information you can about it. Um, and the LLS, I can't say enough about the, what a wonderful resource it's been for the patients I've been lucky enough to take care of for over 20 years. It's also a wonderful opportunity to seek a second opinion from a lymphoma specialist um, in your area.